Just the triangle, yeah. And maybe not even the name of the film. Just... I'm Ricky D'Ambrose. I'm here at Poster Atati with Mubi, talking about some posters I liked. There was a, and I think it's still around, in Chicago, a version of what was like Kim's video called Odd Obsession. That's how I got to see Paris Belongs to Us. And it makes me think of a time when I was in film school and being introduced to things that as a teenager I, I wouldn't have come across otherwise. This incentivized me to want to go see the film because it is so elusive and strange. I think also in addition to liking the design a lot for this poster, it's probably one of the most exciting films I've seen released in the past few years. The movie is so chaotic and strange in many ways, but this poster is, it leaves you in for a surprise, I think. I love this pick of yours. This is the German poster for Pasolini's um, Gospel According to St. Matthew. It's actually designed by one of my favorite poster designers, a guy named Hans Hillman. He's considered one of the greatest uh, graphic designers of the 20th century. So this uh, Pasolini film, in addition to being, I think, a, a pretty wonderful movie by Pasolini with a really extraordinary performance by the young actor who plays Christ, is something that reminds me a lot of some of the designs that got me interested in graphic design. And those were put out by Grove Press and Evergreen Review in around the time of this film's poster release, 64, 65. It was pretty formative for me when thinking about doing the designs for my own posters. I mean, this reminds me of almost like something from The Scarlet Empress, one of her other films. A really graphic, bold, simple, straightforward image that doesn't necessarily tell you very much about the film other than Dietrich, which I think is probably telling you enough that you need to know. I just think it's a really lovely image. Talk about movies that change you in some way. But even when I was watching this very degraded, poorly subtitled version of the film, it had an immediate effect on the way that I thought about movie making and the way I thought about editing. And I didn't realize until later on, making my own feature, how much of an impact Ackerman had on me. And I had the privilege of meeting Chantal Ackerman about two years before she died. And I interviewed her for movie uh, when she was in New York to present the restoration of News from Home, which was really something. And she's uh, been a very important filmmaker to me. It's so unusual to see a poster that's horizontal uh, and that uses this kind of orientation so effectively with this really strange illustration, which is, if you've seen the film, doesn't really, it's like a Genet thing. I don't know, it really bears no direct connection to the film. Uh, these aren't, it's not like River Phoenix or something in it. Um, and the, the really vibrant red type, which kind of reminds me of, in a way of the end credit sequence of the movie, which is in bright primary colors. Barry Lyndon was something I thought was kind of off-putting as a kid. I, I had associated it with a stodgy period movie. I didn't know very much about Barry Lyndon. I didn't know how extraordinary it was. And then I saw it and it was really unlike any of the other movies set in the 18th century that I would think of when I was that age. And Kubrick's involvement in the, not just the making of his films, but also in the way that they were presented publicly. You're seeing something that is very much guided by for better or for worse, one filmmaker's sensibility. And I always thought that was what a filmmaker did. Hence, this poster just reminds me of a lot of the reasons I got interested in filmmaking. I have said all there is to be said.